In this example of a friction problem, we have a crate, a 40 kilogram mass that we're looking at trying to move. Uh, the crate has got a cable or a rope attached to it, and we are that the cable comes around at point B at an inclination of 40 degrees. The equivalent weight of this uh, crate is 392.4 newtons. That's unfortunate that it's newtons in the symbol. Uh, we'll have to differentiate between the symbol for the normal force and when we need capital N for newtons. We are also going to assume that the center of gravity of this crate is in the center since we're not given any other uh, information here, and that would be where the W is. So that when they come down to the free by diagram of our crate, there's our W, there's our force P at an angle of inclination to the horizontal of 40 degrees. We have a normal force that we don't know its location. So that's important to realize. Don't know where that's at. And then we have a friction force that is on this surface, tangential to the surface of the free diagram. We don't know its value yet either. That's uh, F sub F. So there's a free by diagram. Okay. When in friction problems, we usually have to start making some assumptions here. We're trying to get this thing uh, at the impending motion. So uh, to preserve space here, I'm going to move to the right instead of straight down, but we will assume that we have impending sliding and that will tell us then a couple of things. One, that S of F then would be equal to mu times N, the normal force, not Newton's, that would be 0.35 here that's what we've been given in the problem statement. Um, in general, of course, S of F is not equal to mu and the capacity is, but not the friction force itself. The only unintended sliding is that. Now, once we have that, we can begin to write equilibrium equations. For instance, some forces in the X, we would then be able to state that we've got uh, F sub F that's equal to mu N. Uh, minus then the x component of our force, set equal to zero, and that gives us a relationship between n and the force p, putting in the actual value for mu in that case, okay? and then we can sum forces in the y direction, and we'll have n minus our weight plus the vertical component of our force, from which, when we substitute in uh, the new expression for the normal force, no, that's the normal force, not a Newton in this particular case, we would have then the expression that P, after we factor it out, cosine of 40 degrees over our mu value of 0.35 plus sine of 40 would equal our W, which in this case, of course, equals 392.4 newtons. Different N there. Again, inconvenient that that's the same symbol as our normal force. From which, we would then find that P is equal to 138.6 newtons. But we need to check our assumption about whether we really have sliding or not. And so we'll do that by using our third equilibrium equation, which will be some of moments about some convenient point that would be C that we want to uh, do that about. And so we're going to need the normal force value uh, to do that, so let's go ahead and calculate that using our expression up here that n is equal to p of 138.6 times cosine of 40 degrees divided by 0.35, and that value will be 303.4. And now, when we sum moments about point C, 
Let's say counterclockwise is positive. We've got our end value, our normal force value of 303.4, but times an unknown moment arm of x. And then minus our w value, 392.4 times a moment arm of 0.4 meters. And then our uh, pulling force here will break up into two components. The x component will be 138.6 times cosine of 40 degrees with a moment arm of 0.5 uh, meters. Right, that's that value right there. And then we'll also have the y component, sine of 40 degrees, times its moment arm of the whole thing of 0.8 meters, so equal to zero. And we will find out, if I've done the math correctly, that our value of x would equal 0 0.225 meters. That is greater than zero. And what that tells me is that it slides before rotating. And so our assumption was correct. And that would mean that this would be our answer. So let's do a three by diagram real quick to demonstrate what would happen if we were tipping and why it's the case that x being greater than zero means that we slide before we tip. Okay, so at the tipping condition, the key is that although the weight still is in the same place, the p-value is at the same place for that tipping, then this is getting ready to tip about point C. And so even though we had a frictional force there, the normal force would have to slide over to the left, meaning this x value gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we get ready to tip. And at x equal to 0, we have impending tip. And uh, if x had been less than or equal to 0, that means we have tipping before sliding. Okay. That's why I concluded with the x of being a positive number here that the normal resultant was acting out to the right. And so we have stable equilibrium just with a p-value just below uh, this one. And when it reaches that, we'll have to begin to slide.